Secret endings are way better than regular endings because regular endings have to do boring things like conclude the story in a narratively satisfying way, whereas secret endings can just reveal that a dog was behind the events of Silent Hill 2. That's why developers love sneaking secret endings into their games that shed new light on the story, break the fourth wall, or even let you bypass the game entirely. Disculpame, Clara. Not my fight. As such, a secret ending is always worth seeing, and none more so than these seven unbelievable alternative outros. Enjoy, but also beware spoilers ahead for the following games. most singular individual. And to think, she wanted me to put you down. Lucky for you, I never throw away anything useful. Prepare the serum. Forgetting's not so bad. You've done it before. If you haven't been paying attention to the Hitman series recently, it might surprise you to find out that it has a fantastically complicated plot that serves as a background to you shoving people into winemaking equipment. By the events of Hitman 3, Agent 47 and his handler Diana have defected from the ICA assassin agency and are attempting to bring down a shadowy cabal of global elites known as Providence. Although to be fair, this is mostly achieved by shoving them into winemaking equipment. After several twists and turns, the final mission of Hitman 3 sees Agent 47 wake up on a train where he is to be injected with a memory-wiping serum that will allow Providence's intermediary, a man known as the Constant, to reprogram him back into being an assassin for Providence. Okay, right now the serum erases long and short-term memory banks wholesale, but in a couple of cycles we'll be able to isolate the effect to individual memories. When you reach the Constant at the end of the train, two choices are presented to you. You can either kill him, which in the absence of any winemaking equipment you'll have to do with whatever you can find lying around, or you can inject him with the serum, erasing his memory and non-lethally taking him out of the picture. No! This is what it means to lose everything. Wait long enough before choosing either option, however, and a third option opens up to you. Second thoughts. Perhaps we understand each other after all. Noticing your hesitation, the Constant asks if you wouldn't rather just inject yourself and go back to a life of uncomplicated hitmanning without having to worry about all these global conspiracies and cabals of shadowy elites. Take him up on the offer, and you get this secret ending in which 47 wakes up in a padded room back in his old life as a cold-blooded assassin. Wake up. Wake up, my friend. It's the dawn of a new day, and you have things to do which exactly recreates the opening of the original Hitman, Codename 47. Bring up, my friend. It's the dawn of a new day, and you have things to do. Gotta say, 47 looks a lot better now. Probably all that serum. Castillo's got, what, 300,000 troops? I count six burnt out guerrillas, and you with a bullet to the leg. You can shoot, so shoot. Far Cry games are notorious for their secret shortcut endings in which you can essentially skip the game entirely if you don't feel in the mood, which include one in Far Cry 4 where you just sit around and wait for Pagan Min to come back from running errands. But I sincerely apologise, we saw terrorists in the area and yada yada. And the one in Far Cry 5 in which you decide to just not arrest Joseph Seed and everyone goes home. We're leaving, Rook. Far Cry 6 continues this noble tradition with its secret shortcut ending, which you can unlock after the story mission Libertad Rises, which rewards you with your very own boat. I keep my promises, Danny. You wanted a boat, you got a boat. The idea is that you're being given a boat with which to sail back to America, but that your conscience will make you stay on Yara and keep fighting for the rebels to help liberate them from the oppression of the overbearing dictator Anton Castillo. You're my best kid here. I can't promise you victory, I can't even promise you survival. What I can promise you is this, you are the lucky one. If you prefer though, you can just take this boat and power off out to sea, prompting a sorry not my fight from your character Danny. Disculpame Clara, not my fight. 
And then you get the ending, in which it is three months later, you're lounging on a beach, and according to a radio news report, the rebels were crushed and Castillo has tightened his grip on power. President Anton Castillo announced that Clara Garcia, the leader of the terrorist group Libertad, was killed by his special forces. It is a nice beach though, so I think this still counts as a good ending. Time is like a tide. sci-fi roguelike Returnal you play as Celine, an Astra Scout who gets trapped in a time loop because it came out in 2021 when all games had to be about time loops. We alone must find meaning amidst the flow. Returnal actually has a series of endings, each of which furthers the two main objectives of one, revealing more about the game's mysterious story, and two, making things even more confusing. My shadow. You were how I escape. The first ending of Returnal, which you get for finally reaching the White Shadow signal in the Citadel, shows your character Celine being rescued, returning to Earth, and living out a long life touching plants and playing piano before eventually dying of old age, which is pretty nice, at least by the grim standards of Returnal. Except like, that wasn't an ending at all, that was just a particularly long Returnal run, and now that you've died again, you're back on planet time loop. Welcome to Act 2. No, I can't be here. I escaped. I was... When you do go bravely on to complete Act 2, you unlock the game's first actual ending, which concludes with Celine encountering a giant alien octopus and receiving this vision. Is this what you wanted me to see? In it, Celine is seen driving at night with a child in the back of her car. It's a nice normal scene, rudely interrupted by an astronaut, who wanders into the road and causes Celine to crash off a bridge and into a river. In her submerged and sinking car, Celine goes to free the child from their seat, but then gets got by a bunch of cloudy tentacles. As endings go, this one is less revealing than perhaps you were hoping for, but hey, if you soldier on and unlock the elusive secret ending, maybe everything will become clear. To find out, you will need to jump through a whole bunch of other hoops on subsequent Returnal playthroughs in order to recover a car key. This will be the last time I return. Reach the end of the game with the car key in your possession, and then you get the final secret ending in which you unlock the car you found mysteriously rusting away on this alien world. Then you're confronted by a pregnant alien-looking skeleton in a wheelchair who apparently is, or represents, Celine's mother. In any case, she strangles you for a bit, and then you knock her down. I told you to leave me alone. <laughs> In anything but the most literal possible interpretation of what the hell is going on, we can infer that Celine has issues with her mum, which, okay, but then it's straight on to a traumatic flashback or an alien time warp or some other kind of vision that reveals, whoa, it turns out you were somehow the astronaut on the bridge before the car crash. The interpretations supported by this still pretty baffling secret ending are many and varied, but one thing we can now be sure of is this. This crash, like my many, many deaths in Returnal, was 100% my own fault. I'm leaving. Try and stop me. In the excellent roguelike dungeon crawler Hades, you play as Zagreus, son of the god of the underworld, who wants to escape from hell so he can visit his mum. Um, you must be Persephone. My name is Zagreus, and I think I might be your son. Keen to stop you doing this is your dad, Hades, who is not such a fan of you getting out of hell, and who acts as the game's final boss, and the guy who gives you a hard time about it if you die. Have you yet satisfied your foolish urges? Perhaps a lashing from the Fury's whips would set you straight. Anyway, just finishing Hades once is challenge enough, but when you do finally make it to the surface and your mother, Persephone, it turns out that Zagreus is bound to the underworld and unable to survive outside of it. So he snatches a few moments with his mother before heading back to hell, vowing to return. I'll tell him. I'll tell him. I feel awful. I... 
I have to go. A lot of players would leave things there, satisfied that they'd bested what is a very challenging game. But if you stayed true to Zagreus's word and kept beating Hades to revisit his mother over and over again, it was possible to unlock the game's true ending, which is a lot cheerier than the one you initially get. Upon finishing the game for the tenth time, instead of fighting you at the end, Hades will stand aside and let you pass, and when you reach Persephone, she will announce that she's coming back to the underworld with you, and you take a nice boat ride together. Maybe just try and ignore all the skulls. Persephone arrives back in Hades, and your dysfunctional family finally gets to talk through their issues, achieving some level of closure. Or as much closure as you're likely to get when you're all literal gods, and one of you is basically the devil. Oh boy. If you think for an instant that I should go easier on you because of this, you'll soon learn otherwise. If even that isn't enough Hades for you, there is another final ending you can unlock from this point where you invite all the gods of Olympus to a massive party in the underworld. What's this, nephew? Why is this a note? And reconcile Olympus and Hades, turning everyone into one big happy family. As for the House of Hades, it required thorough cleansing from the rafters to the floor who did canonically wreck the place partying. But still. Everything that lives is designed to end. They are perpetually trapped in a never-ending spiral of life and death. However, life is all about the struggle within this cycle. 2017's Near Automata has 26 endings, which range from good to bad to one where you die from eating a fish. The game's true secret ending, however, is widely believed to be the ending designated E, the end of Yora, which starts off the same as the previous story endings, with, spoilers, all of the characters dead. If you completed the previous endings, a new option will present itself, allowing you to try and save the personal data of the characters from the game from being deleted. Salvaging data poses an unacceptable level of risk. Knowing that, do you still wish for them to survive? At this point, the credits suddenly become a bullet hell shooter with you trying to destroy all the names of the people who worked on the game without being hit by glowing orange and pink orbs, which presumably didn't work on the game, what with them being orbs. While it might seem like a fun, interactive credit sequence, this shooter is actually rock hard, and before long, you'll most likely find yourself dying, and the game asking you various discouraging questions. refuse to give up and you'll be given an offer of rescue from another player. Accept it and suddenly you're back in bullet hell, only this time with a gang of other players watching your back. Now you have the combined power of all these players and any time you take a hit, one of them takes the fall, with their name popping up telling you that their data has been lost. With this newfound power, you should be able to reach the end of the sequence, where you're treated to signs of hope that your pals 9S and 2B survived, but that's when you're offered the final and most meaningful choice. Do you have any interest in helping the weak? There is a catch, however. Doing so will erase your near automata save data for good. Selecting this option enables you to save someone somewhere in the world. However, in exchange, you will lose all of your save data. Do you still wish to rescue someone? And also the person you help might be a jerk, says the game. Still, This person, who cries out for help even as we speak, may be someone you intensely dislike. Do you still wish to help? So you sit and watch all your hard work be deleted, but can rest easy in the knowledge that you helped some random stranger probably watch all their hard work be deleted also. All of your data has been deleted. And so... We must say goodbye. Hmm, maybe I should have given this a bit more thought. Come a long way to get here, haven't we? Just think, it all started in a f***ing landfill. <laughs> Man, you tried to kill me. See exactly what I mean. Trying to save your sorry hide now. 
The premise of Cyberpunk 2077 is that you are a hired gun in a dystopian future where a cyber ghost lives inside your cyber brain. The good news is the ghost looks exactly like Keanu Reeves. The bad news is you can never make out with him. Truly a dystopia. Know what? You're starting to remind me of me. 50 years back. Minus the charisma. An impressive the other bad news is you're going to die of having this jackass living in your head rent-free, unless you find a way of not doing that. It seems you are running out of time. That leads you eventually to this rooftop, where your various options for marching into one final decisive battle are laid out. And it's this decision that governs which ending of Cyberpunk 2077 you're gonna get. You can let me do that. Or you can try Pan Am and her tarmac rats but then their lives will weigh heavy on your soul. Or you take Arasaka's deal, but then you'll have your own soul on your conscience. If you can't bring yourself to make the decision, though, or if you just space out while gazing at Johnny Keanu face, then after five minutes of awkwardly waiting around, he presents you with a secret alternative option. Kind of tough deciding which of your friends get to die, isn't it? Good news is you got this one Chum who's already dead. And he'd be honored to join you on a wild suicide run. Oh, also, by the way, whether or not Johnny will actually present you with this secret alternative option was determined several hours ago by you, unknowingly, during one specific conversation in one specific mission. But let's say it was my real grave. What would you write? If you said the wrong things in that conversation, you irretrievably flubbed your relationship with Johnny and locked off the secret ending. So good luck with not having done that. Choosing the secret option means you and Johnny go kick in the front door of the Corpo Pigs at Arasaka and storm the building alone, which isn't so much a clever plan as it is the hardest possible way to achieve your goals. If you do somehow pull it off, you wind up back in cyberspace to make one final decision about your future. Here, your options are sacrifice yourself and bequeath your body to Johnny, or leave Johnny to hang out in cyberspace with the AI that used to be his girlfriend. This bridge leads deeper into cyberspace. Cross it and permanently sever the connection with your body. The path to your body passes through that mortal well. Now, obviously all choices are fine and valid in this morally ambiguous tale of transhumanism, but also maybe you didn't come this far to give up your sweet cyborg bod and extensive jacket collection. In which case, congratulations, you've opted for the superior of the two possible secret endings by keeping your body. Goodbye, me. And never stop. Flash forward and you've returned to Night City without Johnny and yes, you are basically running out the clock in your still doomed body, but at least now you live in a penthouse with your chosen sweetie. Morning. And yes, your chosen sweetie is going to leave you because life be like that sometimes, but by way of consolation, you are at long last a true legend of Night City and you do have a flying car. Good morning, V. Hey, Del. Are you prepared for takeoff? Also, in this, the most epic of possible cyberpunk endings, you get to go to space to do a space heist on the luxury space station resort Crystal Palace. So you can check that one off your bucket list. Of course, if you unknowingly messed up that specific conversation several hours earlier, then your actual ending will be just staring at Keanu Reeves' face forever, which I think we can all agree is the true best ending to Cyberpunk 2077. Look at those cheekbones. If you played Inside, you'll remember that the ending wasn't exactly what you would call straightforward on account of how you get absorbed into a horrible naked flesh katamari and go on a rampage through a laboratory. I added the music. Makes it more fun. If you'd rather your Inside ending were less fleshy, however, there is a secret ending which is much more sinister and inscrutable, if such a thing were possible. To get this ending, you have to find and smash all 13 of these mysterious glowing orbs that are hidden throughout the game. 
Once you've done that, you need to return to the location of the second orb you found, a bunker in a cornfield accessible via a hatch. There's a locked door, next to which is a lever which plays different musical tones depending on which direction you push it in. It's here you need to input a musical sequence you heard earlier in the game that you probably didn't think was significant at the time. Catchy. At this point, the door unlocks and you get to pass through into a new secret area in which resides the master mind control device and, should you choose to use it, the switch that can be used to deactivate it. Tampering with this switch causes the machine to deactivate, the lights to go out and, most significantly, your character to slump over, much like the zombie-like figures we see throughout the rest of the game. Fans have debated what exactly this ending means, but a popular theory is that what you're doing in this secret ending is severing you, the player's, connection with the main character in a fourth wall-breaking moment that it's probably best not to think too hard about, unless you want to end up in a similar state. Man, I know how he feels. Thanks for joining us, friends. Those were the seven best secret endings you have to see to believe. Thanks for watching this list video by Outside Xbox. Don't forget there's one like this every single Thursday on the dot. So if you'd like to enjoy those on the regs, then why not subscribe to Outside Xbox and hit the bell notification button for a notification every single time we publish one of these bad boys. Also, if you'd like to support Outside Xbox and Outside Extra, and that's your choice, then go to patreon.com slash OX club to join the OX supporters club. There is a card on screen with the link you're looking for. Go and check it out, maybe. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.